Hi, today we're going to be looking at yet another facet of the banking system. Uh, and today what we'll be looking at is comparing online to traditional banking, as well as looking at some of the more common electronic money transactions that can be uh, done by your bank or credit union. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between, difference between simple interest and compound interest, and we'll talk about the rule of 72 and how it affects you and your financial plan. When it comes to some of the banking services that you can uh, take advantage of uh, today, there are a number that are done electronically that you should be aware of. Uh, the first is what we call direct deposit, which is uh, simply the ability for uh, your employer typically to put your paycheck into your bank account without requiring you to receive a check and going to the bank on your own to cash it. So there's a direct transfer of funds from your employer to your bank account, which saves you a couple of days and allows you to access your money immediately. It's a pretty standard uh, transaction and service at most banks and credit unions. Remote or mobile deposit is the ability for you to use your smartphone to take a picture of a check and have that check be uh, deposited in your bank account without actually having to physically go to a bank or credit union and uh, handing it to a teller. An electronic fund transfer is your ability to take money out of one account and move it to another without, again, without having to go see a human being at a bank or credit union. So you can take money that's in a money market account or a savings account and put it into your checking account so that you can use it to make a purchase. Check cards and debit cards are um, an electronic form of payment that allows you to pull money from your checking account uh, to purchase things as opposed to a credit card in which you're taking out a short-term loan. When you use a debit card, you're taking money immediately out of your checking account, and so there's no debt um, or, or loan that needs to be repaid. You've got ATM banking, which is just your ability to deposit and withdraw or transfer funds in your account all by interacting with a machine. It's pretty standard. Most people are com comfortable and familiar with, with ATMs. And then you've got your online banking and bill pay, which allows you to have bills automatically paid from your uh, checking account without having to, um, to mail it in or uh, physically write a check to pay the bill. And all of these electronic transactions are pretty standard in today's banking industry. When it comes to the use of ATMs or automated telling machines, um, you do need to have what's known as a PIN number, personal, I personal identification number. Uh, that will allow you access to your account on the ATM. It's important that you protect that PIN uh, because that is what's preventing other people from accessing your account and stealing your money. Um, if you were to give your PIN to a friend and ask them to take money out of your bank account and they took more than you asked, uh, it'd be very difficult for you to prove that they were robbing from you and would be essentially your responsibility because you were the one that gave them the PIN. So make sure that you keep your uh, passwords secure, that you keep them to yourself, and that you don't share them in order to protect not only uh, yourself but your bank account from unauthorized withdrawals. When it comes to banks, you have really two choices. You can go with a traditional bank like Bank of America or Wells Fargo um, that have locations all around the country. You know, it's a physical location that you can go to and visit and, and meet with uh, individuals who work at that location, or you can choose what's known as an online bank like Ally or Everbank, where they don't have uh, locations around your community. They are strictly online. There is no physical building that you can go visit. There are people you can talk to um, online through email or by phone calls, but there's no one that you can interact with on a personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, in-person basis. And so you have a choice between the two, and depending on what you're looking for out of a bank will determine whether or not traditional or online is the best choice for you. When it comes to traditional banking, there are some benefits uh, that you get from going to a to a actual physical location. Um, one of those being that uh, you have more services avail available to you. Traditional banks tend to have a, a wider suite of options for you to choose from. You'll also find that you'll be able to interact face-to-face -face with a teller or with a bank representative. So if you do have an issue or a problem, sometimes it's much easier uh, to interact with someone in a, on a personal basis in order to get a problem resolved. Uh, you don't get put on hold, uh, for example, when you're in person at the bank. 
You do have the benefit of a paper trail um, with receipts and statements um, and deposit slips and all of those things that go with the transactions that you're doing at a traditional bank. And really your privacy and security are protected. You don't have to worry about, um, about losing your password or having somebody gain unauthorized access to your account because they've got some sort of keystroke tracker on your phone or on your computer. It's a whole lot more secure when you're going in person to the bank than when you're working online. There are some disadvantages, however, to working with a traditional bank that you should keep in mind when making a decision. One of them is that you have limited access, meaning you can only go to the bank when the bank is open, and typically banks are open during working hours. And unfortunately, the only time you have to go to the bank is when you're not working. So either you stop getting paid at your job in order to go to the bank, or you have a difficult time making it to the bank to be able to use their services uh, in person. You do have more paper to file. There is that paper trail provides a certain degree of security, and yet it does mean that you have to deal with the physical papers as opposed to a purely online statement. Online banking, some benefits. One being 24-hour access. You can contact someone at any time of day in order to get assistance with your account. It's not just that you can see what your account balance is or transfer funds, but you can actually talk to somebody to get help when you need it. They tend to be fast and convenient in the sense that uh, you don't have to drive to the bank. You don't lose 15 minutes one way in order to do a transaction. You can take care of business right here, right now, at the convenience of your home, whenever you want. And you don't have to worry about whether you're going to be able to get to the bank on time before they close. There are some disadvantages, however, to online banking. Uh, one being you don't have a relationship with the bank like you do in a traditional setting. In a traditional setting, you may get to know the bank tellers or the bank executives, the loan officers that you're dealing with on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, uh, and they get to know you and they get to know your needs better than when you're online and you could be dealing with any one of a number of customer service reps, none of whom you've ever actually met or seen in person. And so there is sort of that loss in relationship that can be helpful to you as you're trying to determine what are the, the best services for you. Privacy is also a concern because you're online now. So that adds an extra layer of concern whether or not someone's going to be able to access your account um, illegally or in an unauthorized manner or not, that you don't have as much of a concern when you're in a traditional or face-to-face -face setting. So the question is, which is the right one for you? Is it traditional or online? And the answer depends on who you are and what you're looking for. If you're the other aspect of returns that we want to look at is this idea of the rule of 72. How long would it take for a deposit to double in value? And this, this formula is very simple. It's 72 divided by the assumed annual rate of return will tell us how many years it takes to double. So if we have an 8% rate of return, or if we were getting 8% interest, then it would take us nine years uh, at 8% every single year for our initial deposit to double in worth. So clearly, the faster, the, the higher the rate of return, the faster it will, will uh, increase and compound, and the quicker we will see our values double. So if we had a 4% annual interest rate, then our deposit would double in value within 18 years. If we go to 6% uh, annual rate of interest, we'd see our investment double now by 12 years. And if we went to 9% interest, we would see it double in 8 years. And so the higher the rate of return, the significantly faster it will be for our deposit to double in value. That's one of the reasons why when we get to investments, we'll talk about why Putting money in investments is a much smarter financial plan than sticking it in the bank, because currently the bank interest rate is 0.1%. Well, at 0.1%, it's going to take us more than our lifetime to see our investments double in value, which is why it's important to put your money, uh, at least a large portion of it, into uh, investment vehicles that have a higher rate of return, like 4, 6, 9% rate of return, in order to see our wealth build up quickly. So that's the basics of, uh, of online versus traditional banking, as well as the idea of compounding versus simple interest. And we'll continue to talk more about the financial industry in our next class.